I'll now call upon Deputy Sean Klein. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, I think it goes without saying that uh, fairness should be at the heart of everything we do here in this uh, national parliament, and the non-use of motor vehicle uh, bill will bring fairness to a situation uh, where I think most people uh, are aware of, and the bill will ensure fairness uh, for those responsible citizens who pay their motor tax by closing a loophole which has enabled a minority to evade their obligations uh, under the law. It is put simply unfair that those citizens uh, who do not pay uh, their motor tax or who use the retrospective clause enjoy the use of the road network uh, at the expense of those who do pay. It's estimated that the Exchequer is losing uh, up to 50 million each year and it must be remembered that uh, this is 50 million less to spend on the maintenance of upkeep and upkeep of our roads. And figures compiled by the Controller and Auditor General demonstrate that 1.1 million uh, off-the-road exemption gaps were declared between 2008 and 2011. And this represents a 40% uh, increase and total loss of 226 million uh, for the state. And I'm certain that a significant proportion of the exemptions were of course legitimate and sought by honest and genuine motorists. However, it's also likely that a significant percentage were sought for the sole purpose uh, of uh, evasion of this tax. Uh, unfortunately, there appears to be some difficulty in determining the exact number of motor tax uh, evasions, and a constituent who recently contacted uh, my office on the issue of the motor tax posed the question quite rightly, uh, in, in my view, on why this is the case when technology exists that could play a greater role in enforcement. Uh, for example, technology at, at, at toll booths, for example, could actively assist the Gardaí in apprehending those who are evading their, their tax obligations. In researching this topic, it's noteworthy that many of the changes proposed actually arise from the deliberations of the Local Government Efficiency Review Group. And this group comprised experts from both the public and private sectors and carefully, carefully reviewed the array of local government uh, areas. It's unfair, so it's unfair to say that the provisions of this bill are, based, are, are, are not based on research and examination or represent a knee-jerk reaction. However, concerns have been raised with me regarding a number uh, of sections. Uh, subsections 13 and 14 of Section 7, for example, which empower the Minister to prescribe a fee to accompany a non-use declaration. And I would continue, Minister, in light of the fact that we are already closing a loophole that would prevent tax evasion, that we, that, that we do not impose uh, a charge, and I'm very glad to hear from your opening speech uh, that the government does not intend to introduce a fee uh, at this time. I would also appeal that section 14 be augmented with a new category of fee waivers for vintage vehicles. We must recognise the fundamental difference between the car that is used daily for all sorts of purposes and those vintage cars uh, which are being kept by enthusiasts or hobbyists for recreational and pastime reasons. We must also realise that a car originating from as, recent as the uh, recently as the 1980s can be considered vintage and may be kept but not used frequently by citizens. For example, it can be used during the summer months, but locked away in storage during the winter months. And this is, uh, you know, some individuals have already raised this in light of this proposed bill. I think that should be looked at. There are uh, several, and I appreciate that uh, under, the, under the other acts, I suppose, uh, a car over 30 years is, is, is classed as vintage, but there are cars that are, that are of a younger age than that that would be liable for full, for full tax if, if declared for the full year. There are several state agencies or government departments involved in the implementation uh, of the motor tax system, including the Department of Environment, Community uh, and Local Government, the Department of Transport, Tourism and Sport and the Revenue Commissioners. And I think it's uh, very welcome uh, that Section 5 of this bill makes provision for the Transport Minister to operate as a licensing authority. And I believe that we should go further and transfer the responsibility for motor tax policy currently under the remit of the Department of Environment, Community and Local Government to the Department of Transport uh, uh, and Tourism and Sport. I think we'll make uh, since to do this and, impose, and to also to improve uh, the motor tax system. Uh, some in this House have sought to criticise the transferring of the driving licence function of the road to the Road Safety Authority from the County Councils as proof of some campaign against local government. And this is not true. There is no campaign uh, against local government. Transferring driving licence functions is rooted in road safety. It recognises on passing their test, a person will be awarded a driving licence for life. So it makes sense that the Road Safety Authority be, the, be central to the driving licence pro process. Road safety must be central from the start of this bill in providing financial arrangements for the transfer from local authority to the Road Safety Authority, and uh, this bill helps to ensure uh, that. Uh, and in conclusion, uh, Chairman, nobody likes paying tax, but when those that pay tax want to ensure and need to know that everyone who is legitimately liable to pay tax pays it, and this bill certainly uh, does that for the road, uh, for road tax.